who knows? The decree of Allah is good, even if you see suffering. And remember the Prophet of Muhammad, we've seen the, these prophetic messages. When, when parents are holding their, their, their kids in Gaza, their newborns, and they're saying, Alhamdulillah, right? And we remember that the Prophet did the exact same thing. He was tribulated, he suffered tribulation similar to them. He carried his own newborn, Ibrahim, but he said, the eye will shed tears. The heart will and the heart will be saddened. And we will not say except what pleases Allah. And we are really saddened to your departed Rahim. So remember, you may dislike something, you will have suffering, of course. We're all sad and we've all shed tears when we saw those images. Well, our hearts were, were, were melted. Our hearts broke, break every time we see those videos. But this is this should not trigger a, a, a reaction towards God where you're saying, why God? Why are you doing this? This is not, because we know that this is good. What is happening ultimately is good, whether it's in this world or the hereafter. Remember, have faith in Allah and Allah's decree as, as, as His decree is always good. This was my first message. I know I don't be conscious for the time. All right, the second message is, we belong to one Ummah. Look at the Ummah. Look at what happened when 1.8 billion Muslims roared on social media, roared in the streets of the major metropolitan cities. We are one Ummah. Do not tell me this Ummah is dead. Do not tell me this Ummah is done. We are still alive. We still have a strong beating heart. When Blinken left Washington, he went to Netanyahu. And he was supposed to come back to Washington, but Blinken went back to the Arab world leaders to, with one message. Silence the people. The, the top that the politicians are trying to silence every single one of you. Your reposting, retweeting on social media is making them buckle in their seats. So keep, we'll talk about what to do now. But I'm saying, this. look at every, look at the new generation, look at the kids. Who would, everyone now knows about the Aqsa. Our kids, my kids are experts in the Palestinian uh, Arab conflict. They know exactly what happened all the way from the Canaanian. They know the story of this land. This was a great opportunity for us to educate everyone. This Ummah is not dead. This Ummah is not dead. We're still beating. We're still alive. So it's important. The Prophet says, Good is in me and in my Ummah to the day of judgment. We have to believe this. It is very important. This is one message I really want to strong. They are they know this. Our enemies know this. They are spending millions, if not billions, of dollars to silence every single one of you. It is not a secret. The money is being spent. And the Quran said they will do this and they are do doing this. Those who disbelieve will spend, their, this is in the Quran, will spend their money to block the way of Allah. They will spend it. These millions of dollars will be spent. And then it will be a regret on them. And then they will be defeated. Do we believe in the Quran? This is one woman. Ben-Gurion said, the old will die. Ben-Gurion, when they founded Israel back in 48, they said, the old will die and the young will forget. The old did die, but did the young forget? Did the young generations? Now, almost 80 years after that, 70 plus years, did we forget? We, most of us were not born by 1948. We are still roaring. For the poor Philistine, we will not forget. So remember, we belong in one home. And this is my second message. My third message is the Aqsa itself. I actually had the, 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 the blessing and, and the name of Allah to visit the Aqsa, Majid al-Aqsa. 
When you look at the Masjid Al-Aqsa, it is the thermometer, and listen to what I'm saying carefully, it is the thermometer of faith on earth. If you're an alien and you want to know how is faith on the planet earth, look at the Masjid Al-Aqsa. Either who's taking care of it, or how are the believers attached to it? If it's a forgotten, there are periods where the Aqsa was forgotten by the believers on this earth. The faith on earth is little. But if you see that the believers are taking care of Al-Aqsa, or the believers are strongly attached to the Masjid Al-Aqsa, faith is good. Remember, it's in Quran. We have to understand our connection to the Masjid Al-Aqsa. Allah says, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, min al-Masjid al-Harami ila al-Masjid al-Aqsa alladhi barakna hawla. So, God, when He describes Al-Aqsa, He says that we have blessed around it. The Masjid Al-Aqsa is blessed. This is in our creed. The, what, what, is, what is the main message of an Isra? Like, what is the main objective of the Isra and Mi'raj trip? Right? When you ask anyone, it is to meet Allah. For the Prophet وسلم, to meet the Creator, to meet Allah. That was the main objective. He didn't go directly from Mecca. It was there so that you could meet Allah to see Allah and prescribe the, the, the salat to be prescribed. He had to stop at a Masjid al-Aqsa first. Imagine the most spectacular view. Every, the Prophet arrives there. Every single Prophet from Adam to Isa is waiting for him. There, physically, not spiritually. They're not some transparent ghosts. They are there physically. For those of you who have the honor to visit the Masjid al-Aqsa, every step is a foot. You're literally in a footstep of one of the Prophets. Every time you make sujood on any, on any place on that plateau, not only the Qutb al and the Musall al tibi anywhere on that plateau is where a Prophet had his head. So remember this. This is the most spectacular. Now the Prophet stands with them. And he's standing beside heavyweight Prophets, Ibrahim. The Khalil, the, Allah befriended Sayyidina Ibrahim. Musa, the one who spoke to Sayyidina Ibrahim. And to, to, and spoke to, to Allah. You have Nuh, you have Sulaiman, you have Dawood, Isa, everyone, Ilyas, the Exodus, is, everyone is there. And the Prophet stands, and Jibreel comes. Who is, who is he going to ask to be the Imam? And he asks our Prophet وسلم, to get up and be the Imam. This is our land. This is our this is sacred to us. It is your prophet that was the imam of all the prophets over there on this land, on that land over there. In the Sunnah we know that right? When you go when I visit you at your house, I don't be the imam. And we know that if you visit me in my house, I will be the imam if I visit you. Every man should be the imam in his house. So it is a very strong significance that it was the prophet that was the imam. It's like the Prophets are giving our, our Prophet the banner of taking care of this sacred land. Right? So the Masjid al aqsa is extremely important. Your love, it's part of a creed, it's not just a political thing. Your love and your attachment to the Masjid al aqsa is a measure of how, it was one of the measures of your Iman. It's one of the measures of your Iman. That's my third message. My fourth message, for those who are depressed, and I have to make it um, quick. For those who are depressed and doubting, I, I, and I see that every now and then. Um, look at look at the, the, the Muslims after the after the, the, the battle of Uhud. They're defeated. They're broken. Uh, Abdullah bin Iran was just martyred. Abdullah bin Jahsh was just martyred. Uh, Ahmad bin Yasin, uh, sorry, uh, Musa bin Umayy was just murdered. And of course, Hamza bin Abdul Muttalib, right? The, the beloved Hamza to Sayyidina Muhammad, to the Prophet, was just murdered and mutilated. And they, the, 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 the Sahaba, the companions, would hear uh, the Prophet cry audibly. He, they, they would hear him cry over Hamza. And then the Quran comes and says, Don't be weak. Don't, 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 don't be sad. Right. Look, look at look at the message from the Quran. It's like a tender. You, you know when your when your when your child gets into a fight or gets injured, you tell them, "Don't worry, don't don't be sad." You look at the look at the Quran. What I tell you, what I tell you, when you are better, you are better, you are higher. In good to many, 
with a condition of an iman. Iriam says, if you're hurt, Iriam says, they're hurt as well. And we know they're hurt, and they're hurt bad. It was that we're hurt, but they're hurt really bad, right? Remember, look at history. Look at history. It's, it's not empires come and go and fall. So, this cycle is one of the sunnah of Allah. There will there be right, the empires will rise and they will fall. So that Allah would, why is this, why is this cycle come? The ebb and flow of victory and then struggles and then victory. It's not going to be heaven. This, this is not where this abode is. Right? So to see who is the true believer. Who is going to be steadfast on his iman and his faith, whether it's good times or tough times? And to take martyrs from you. Remember the first message, the hikmah of Allah. He, it is a test, and He wants to take martyrs from us. All right? Those thousands of people in Gaza, and accept all shahada, may Allah accept them among, among the shahada, inshallah. All right? They passed the test. They finished the test quickly. They're happy now. All right? Yes, we hurt. Because we're one body. We are one body. We will hurt. We will cry. It's, it's one body. We, the Prophet said the Muslims, the moment, the Muslims and the moments and the believers are one body. If one is suffering, the other, the rest of the body is suffering. And we've seen that. We've seen that. We've seen that we're all suffering. Right? So, just... Don't, don't, don't despair. This, this is one of the sunnahs of Allah. It's, it's a very, uh, the rest of the ayah, I'm saying to him that the whole Jannah, or do you think you're going to just enter paradise and you're going to like slide through earth without, without trials and tribulation? Right? When am I going to learn that the Jannah had a week? Why am I going to stop again? And Allah would not know, and would not, would not see who struggled. With you, who performed jihad, true jihad, and who had patience through this. The, the, the price of the Jannah is, is, um, is not cheap. So for those who doubt a lot, three things that you can think of to, to help you with that. Number one, life's short. And it's not that life's short, YOLO, life's short. It's life, this life is short. Right? The Prophet said, this life is just, I am... Passing the desert, there's a tree, I rest a little bit, and I go. Then we have to look at this life. This is not the end all, right? Our time here is limited. There are tests, but we, we our eyes are not in the salt. Alright? Life is short. It does not weigh even a wing of a mosquito in the eyes of in the sight of Allah. This life is really short. So no depression. Right? It's going to be good. Whether, whether you see that good or not, it is going to be good. Number two, nothing is fixed. Remember I said, And these are the days, and we cycle those days between people. Some people will be strong, and then you'll weaken, and then you'll be strong. We, at some point, the Muslims were the strongest nation on earth. The more advanced civilization on earth. It started really weak with one person. Rasulullah the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alayhi salatu wa sallam. Okay. <clears throat> Number three, we believe that we will be victorious. Whether you see it or not, you will be, we will promise that this ummah in this world will be victorious at the end. You may die before seeing it, the people of Gaza die before seeing it, but you have to understand Number one, life is short. It's not the end all. Number two, it's not fixed. It's a cycle. And number three, we were promised victory by Allah. All right? Now, Surat, at, at that point, Surat al Buruj, remember in Mecca, and I, I will end the first part of the football with it. In, in, in Mecca, Surat al Buruj is one of the Mecca surahs. It's, it's a short surah. And it was revealed when the Prophet was. Helpless. We all feel help. helpless. He first few people just believed in him, supported him, and this is Sumayya, the first martyr of Islam, being 
mur murdered in public in a very, very brutal way, being shoved a spear into her private parts. This is how Sumaya, our first martyr, died. And you say, Sablan al Oh, the, the family of Sa'ad Yasser, just Sablan, in the Ma'arid al the just patience. Your, your, your appointment with me is, 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 is in paradise. No, the, the, the Surah al uh, Buruj has, and in this, in this time, the Surah al Buruj was revealed. And it talks about three people, three nations, that had the same beginning, but the end of the story with all three nations was very different. The timing of the surah could not be more perfect. Number one, it starts with Ashab al those people of the trench. And then it goes, um, uh, the Fir'am the people of Moses, Pharaoh and Moses, and Qawm uh, Saleh, right? Thamud. So these are the three people that the surah talks about. The first is those people who believed and they were prosecuted. The, the, the prosecutors dug a trench, they filled the trench with fire, and they were all burned. End of story. They have not seen success. That's it. There's no intervention, nothing. They believed, they were killed. The second people are the Qawm Musa. And you can see now the prosecution keeps on going, on and on and on. So not only they, they were believed, but the prosecution kept on going and on and on and on and on until there was a meeting point where the uh, Pharaoh and Moses were at the, at the sea and the sea opens, the children of Israel passed and then uh, Moses, um, uh, the Pharaoh, and, uh, Pharaoh and his army um, uh, perished with the divine intervention of God. All right, so you can see there was a struggle for years, and then divine intervention. And the Qawm Saleh was just divine intervention. God just intervened, killed Qawm Saleh, and the believers went away. There was no um, uh, conflict, all right? It is, it's important, this message, the surah is telling you that the, the end, the victory, we believe the victory is coming, but it's coming to come at the time and in the way that Allah desires. It's not up to us to say, victory has to come now, by this way. Or then, or by that time. We may see the victory, we may not see the victory. Victory may not come, but it's not. We have some black tidings that we are not going to be like the Ashab al Because the Prophet said, the victory will be, we will have victory in this world. How and when, we don't know, but we have to submit that this is for the, um, uh, is determined by Allah. And the, 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 the Surah al is, is really good, and it ends with, Inna the, the wrath of Allah is really strong. Uh, he starts and he ends. And he is the most merciful, the most forgiving, the Ashr Majid. He owns, he's the one of the, he owns the, the, the majestic throne. And he is the doer of what he desires. So it is very important to look at what's happening around us through that lens. Please uh, don't forget to pass the boxes for donations. Please uh, support the ministry.
focus, and I'm going to suggest, this is my suggestion, on four things that we have to do. Four very precise things. Every single one of us, you do. That's our role. Because you don't want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your response was, I was watching. I saw it all. And when you were asked, what did you do? Nothing. The, the people of Philistine will be victorious. It, they will be victorious. But when that victory happens, there will be two columns. Which column? Are you going to be the ones who are watching them? Or did something? And the question is, what should we do? First thing, do not stop talking about the Naqsa. Do not stop talking about Gaza. Do not stop talking about Philistine. Talk to your family. Talk to your friends. Talk to your co-workers. Talk to everyone around you. Educate people about Philistine. Bingorian thinks we, the, the new generation, thought the new generation will not remember Philistine. We are here to let, hope he's turning in his grave, to make sure that he was wrong. Talk everyone, every single one. Every Jew knows about the Masjid al Aqsa and knows about Zionism really well. You ask the majority of them. The vast majority of Jews knows about the Zionist product. Our role is to educate our children, our friends, our communities about the Masjid al Aqsa. This is not an option anymore. And I'm not an imam or a mufti, but I think it, it can be followed at this point. If you are ignorant of Al-Aqsa, or what is happening, or the, the, the relevance of that land to us, to yourself as a Muslim, you may be committing a sin. Right? Talk. You are an ambassador of Al-Aqsa. Number two. So first thing we're going to talk. Let everyone know. Do not stop talking. Number two. Share. Share everything on social media. This is... People at the highest levels are spending millions, so you are silenced. As I said earlier, the Secretary of State went and toured the Arab world so that the leaders would silence people. All they can do is silence people in the streets. We have a responsibility. We can go in the streets and we can go on social media. If there is a, if there is a demonstration, you need to show up. You need to show up. Say it. Just make, make the name that I'm going to go there with a thawab. That I'm going to make the Muslims appear. Make the Muslims appear big. With every step, with every shouts that you, that you, that you say, you don't have a hasana. But more easier than that. We don't have to protest every day, every day. But you have the social media. And that is actually scaring the most. There, this is what's scaring our enemies most. Your presence on some, I have been off social media since about 15 years ago. I quit social media, I don't believe it. But when I recreated or created a new Twitter account, X account, just to post and, and, and uh, repost, every, my entire feed now is nothing but gossip. You're, you're forcing the algorithms to let people know 80% of the content of the Palestinian content on the 